Good morning, it's uh, Dave at Out There Bushcraft. Um, beautiful late February morning in the UK, absolutely beautiful. Uh, really feels like uh, spring is on its way. Uh, I thought I would take the opportunity just to step out and um, perhaps show you the way that I set up a tarp and hammock. Um, certainly I think most bushcrafters on YouTube at some point will show you their preferred method of setting up a, a tarp and uh, the knots that they use and so on and so forth so I thought I would do that um, you know you'll, you'll see lots of different ways of doing it but I think it's really useful to see the different ways that people do that and then you can um, pick the technique that you prefer or perhaps blend a few together it's entirely up to you but anyway here it is my basic setup for um, tarp and hammock and the knots I use for my tarp cool things about using tarp and hammock setup I guess is that you don't have to worry about um, uneven ground you know it's not like a tent where you have to be concerned too much about what's on the ground underneath you because you're suspended above it um, and certainly the area that I'm about to use which will be between this tree here and this one just here just in shot um, the ground between them is sloping this way um, but that's absolutely fine, not a problem at all because I'm not going to be lying directly on the ground It's one of the benefits of the tarp and hammock um, Before I set up here, I've had a good look around uh, There's no uh, dead wood hanging up in the, in the trees ready to come down and ruin my sleep or my life um, I'm off the main tracks, so I'm not likely to get any um, traffic through my uh, tarp area during the night for example I'm off animal trails and so on um, so yeah we're gonna we're gonna set up the tarp and hammock here um, and, and, and see how it looks in terms of uh, the order that you set things up in with the tarp and hammock well that's entirely up to you on a day like this there's no reason why I couldn't set um, my hammock up first it might be that I set my hammock up and leave it there all day because I'm just gonna chill out in it you know before I put the tarp up um, there's you know horizon to horizon blue skies no worries about um, any rain so quite easy for me just to set up the hammock first and then do the tarp over the top typically though I would set up my tarp first um, so that I have cover from the weather so that I can put the hammock up afterwards so the first knot that I use uh, when I set up my tarp is um, Evenk hitch some people call it the Siberian hitch um, I'll just kind of show you how that works um, fairly low down on the tree but then I'll set it up higher than that I'm going to set my tarp up so that it's about head height maybe a little bit um, higher which isn't a, um, a significant height for me <laughs> but um, you know generally speaking if you pitch it roughly at your head height um, for general use and that will um, give you a lot of, a bit of comfort when you're operating underneath it um, clearly in certain weather conditions I might drop that down um, just to, to give me more um, comfort in terms of uh, you know not being exposed to uh, driving winds or heavy rain or whatever it is okay the Evenk hitch then um, the Evenk are herdsmen that live in um, Siberia in the, the boreal forest um, they will often be operating in really cold conditions and so the, what's brilliant about the Evenk hitch is that um, you can tie it whilst wearing your mittens and that would be really important that you keep the mittens on in those conditions okay you know um, significantly colder than we would be used to in the UK um, so what I'm just going to demonstrate to you then is how to tie the Evenk hitch but I've got mittens on certainly don't need them today but it will demonstrate that the knot can be tied that way. So all I've done then, I've passed the rope from my tarp, this is gonna be my ridge line, round this tree. I've got one end here, which is the running end, that's the end that's gonna do all the work, and this end here, which goes back to my tarp, that's the standing end. All I'm gonna do then, if you just watch closely, in my mittened hand, I'm gonna wrap the running end once around my hand like that. I'm gonna tilt away past the ridge line and through. What I'll then do is nip 
a bite of the rope and pull it tight and form that little knot there. All I've then got to do is push that knot against the tree like that, just adjust it slightly, push that knot against the tree and that's really all I need at this end, okay? Now I'll demonstrate that again without the mitts just so that you can see how it works um, without the mittens potentially getting in the way, okay? So, standard end which is the end that goes to the top, running end here that's gone round the tree, loop it once around my hand, tilt that hand round and over the top of the ridge line, put my thumb through so I can grab a bite, a bite just being um, a, effectively a loop in the rope, pull that taut like that and then slide it to the tree and that's absolutely all I need. Now you might decide to put a stick through here just so that when you pull that tight like that it will um, be secure. The other way to do it is just to put a little daisy chain link um, so that it's a little bit more secure from that point of view. So the daisy chain would look something like this. So all I've done there is just pass a couple of loops through. I could then put a stick through there or I could pass the end through there. But really, actually, unless you've got, you know, people who are idly pulling on ropes, you shouldn't have too much of a problem, okay? So that's the Evenk hitch ready to go at this end. Now we need to look at what we do at the other end. Okay, slightly bizarre angle, I know, um, and I appreciate you can probably see straight up my nose into the cavity where my brain should be, um, but this is probably the best angle to look at this knot that I'm going to show you, which is the top taut hitch. So I'll just demonstrate how that works, then you'll see straight away that it's also um, a quick release knot. So, remember we've got, um, at the far end we've got the um, Evenk hitch, I've come across to the other um, tree that I'm using so my top is that way okay and all I'm going to do is pass the rope round the tree once and then throw it over the top of the line pull the spare through so that I'm taking in all the slack now the first thing I did as I got here was to pull that as tight as I could get it and then I've got the loop passing over the rope here Okay, so all I need to do now is bring it back round the tree. And again, you can see that's tightening things up. I might decide just to cross the ropes over as I do that. It creates a little bit of extra friction where I've got the crossover there. Okay, then back round the tree. Now I've got a couple of options here. I could, if I wanted to, do that same process again, but I'm not going to bother. All I've got here is I've created this little triangle. I'm going to pass a loop through there and I can actually hold that tight now because of the friction. I'm going to pass a little loop through there and pull it back, okay? And once I've pulled that back, that knot is tight. Now all I'd like to do at this point is just secure it. So I tend just to tie a little daisy chain. And watch how the daisy chain works. The loop that you've created, you pass another loop through. You create yet another loop. So you pass another loop through. And you can do that as many times as you, you feel you need to. I usually do a few like that. And then I've got a couple of options from there. I can pass a stick through there. Um, and tighten it up or I can just take the end of the rope obviously it would no longer be quick release but I can put the end of the rope through there like that and then when I'm ready to take it down pull it back through or remove the stick pull the daisy chain and the daisy chain will unfurl like that all the way to the top okay I'm not going to do that just now I'll show you that later on perhaps and um, so I want to crack on with the rest of the uh, the rest of the hammock uh, top sorry okay so We've got even hitch that way, top taut hitch this way, um, and then that's uh, the ridge line done. It's nice and tight, um, and we can look at how we um, arrange the top from that point. Okay. Okay then. So um, we're at the point where you can see where my top is on the ridge line. This is a Tatonka top that I use. Um, you can also see on the ridge line I have um, a Prusik knot at this end. Um, that is left on the ridge at all times at the ridge line and I also have a push knot at this end um, I'll perhaps show you how to do those in a separate video um, then I have my top pre-strung on the ridge line um, and at either end 
I have little carabiners. You don't need these, but they just make life a little bit easier, okay? And all I'm going to do from this point is clip my prusset knots into the carabiners at both ends. Something like this. You can see there's some other cordage attached there, but I'll explain that later. Um, it's a reason why I like to use the carabiners. Okay, and all I'm going to do then is position my tarp uh, central between the two trees, um, ready to be pegged out. Okay, so I pull my prusik knot. So you'll know that a prusik knot, you may not know, a prusik knot will um, move when there is when it's not under tension. So it'll slide up and down the rope. Um, but as soon as I put it under tension, it just won't move. Okay, so that's really handy. Um, when you're putting your tarp up. It's used for lots of other things as well. But for now, we'll just set the tarp up the way we want it. So I just need to tweak it a little bit um, just to get it as central as I can. It doesn't have to be central, of course, just maybe that's just me okay so there you go I've now got my tarp fairly tight running from um, one tree to the other um, attached to my attached to my ridge line with crusset knots and carabiners um, as I said you could just you don't need the carabiners you could just tie the prussics directly to the loops I just use the, the prussics um, the, the carabiners for other reasons which I'll explain shortly Next job is to peg out the top at the at a basic level at the four corners. I can peg it out in other ways. It has various little loops that I can arrange it in lots of different setups. But for this, for the purposes of this um, demo, we're just going to peg it at the corners. I'm using um, wooden pegs, which means that generally speaking, they're longer, and I can drive them into the soft ground, um, which can really help. Um, and also, if I forget to take these out at the end of the day I've lost four bits of wood as opposed to four of my precious pegs and I'm certainly not the only person who has arrived at a, um, a campsite and found metal pegs still in place so that means I'm certainly not the only person who's ever done that um, it is a little bit frustrating with these um, if I leave them behind it's not the end of the world okay I've sharpened them at one end chamfered them at the other so they can be hit with a maul or an um, the of an axe or whatever you've got with you okay you'll notice that um, on the corners of my tarp guy lines are already attached I touch them with a bowline here and then they've been hanked um, so they've been gathered up and um, tied and secured in such a way that uh, they are neat and tidy so that I'm not ending up when I take this out of the bag with a whole tangle of uh, cord that I need to um, undo and sort out before I can go any further. That's the last thing I want to do, particularly on a day uh, when perhaps it's raining or snowing or whatever else. Okay, so um, these are hanked in that way, and I'll show you how to do the hanging um, during the video. Guy lines on um, tents and tarps and so on are usually designed to take a pull in a certain direction. In this case, in the corners here, directly that way, as opposed to pulling to one side or the other. So you always want to do it in that direction because that means that you're not stretching the stitching in ways that it wasn't designed to do. So always make sure that you position your pegs so that your guy, line, uh, your, your guy lines are pulling the uh, tarp or indeed your tent in the direction that you really want it to go. Okay. Okay, because I've hanged my um, guy lines correctly, they just feed out as I undo them. Um, and I'm now looking at the position where I want my peg to be and I want the peg roughly here okay so all I'm going to do at this point is put the guy line to one side bash the peg in um, 
45 degree angle eventually it will be hammering in plenty deep enough um, it may be that you hit a root or something you might have to work your way around that but I've got my peg driven into the ground all I've got to do now is take my guy line around and just pull it reasonably tight now um, the way I tie this is to use a figure four knot um, so if you just watch the next little clip I'll show you how the figure four knot is tied okay then the figure four knot um, which I'm using to attach my um, guy lines to the peg on the bottom uh, it's a brilliant knot this and if you're a keen camper and um, you want to save weight on a tent perhaps you can take the little plastic clips off your guy lines or sometimes metal ones and just use this instead and that'll save those little bits of weight that matter to some people when they're lightweight camping um, so this is the guy line this piece is heading back towards the top it's at the 45 degree angle that I talked about earlier on and I'm just pulling it at the moment so that it's tight okay now the figure four knot now obviously I've got a lot of spare here um, as you can see but I'll show you how I neaten that up later on how I keep things tidy and um, so the figure four knot um, I can choose to go once round the peg or if I'm using really smooth barked pegs sometimes I'll go round an extra turn like that but it doesn't matter there's the figure four that it gets its name from if you like I've created a triangle here and all I'm going to do is I'm going to pass the line three or four times around that and while I just pull the spare through I'm going to pass it three or four times around the inside of that figure four that I've created okay and it'll be nice and neat and tidy like that and then all I'll do is bring it through again and once it's through again I bring it outside of the four okay once I've got it into that position I can then make a loop outside the four which looks like another figure four if you like and I'm just going to pass yet another loop through there and pull it tight so I pinch this just to seize the two so they're not going to undo as I work and then I'm just going to pull that loop and just make it nice and tight now the way that the figure four knot works is that I can push and pull and tighten it up and equally I can slacken it off a little bit if I need to okay but to tighten it up I'm just going to pull this line towards me and pull the what effectively is like a prusik the friction knot this way okay and that will just help to tighten things up now I've got lots of spare here so I might as well show you how to hank a line now this is the same technique as I would use um, when I'm putting these away later on so I bring it between my little finger and then my next finger and then up to my thumb and all I'm going to do is just loop it in a figure of eight around those digits around my thumb my little finger until I've got a small amount left like this I'm then going to take that round and through the little gap where the palm of my hand is I'll take it round twice just to secure things and then I'll be able to take my thumb out okay once I've got my thumb out all I then need to do is just to tighten this up and I'm pretty uh, keep it pretty taut as I go the last one will just loop around my thumb on my finger depending on which direction I'm heading I might be using my finger there I pass another little loop through that pull it tight I don't pass the entire thing through I leave a loop through so it's a quick release and then that is good to go it won't undo in the wind and I can just usually pop it like that so it's out the way nobody's going to trip on it and um, undo my figure falls okay so I'll just show you that hanking again so if you watch the the quick release as well of course it'll release from that end but it'll also release from that end so there's my line out so the the hanking then little finger round my thumb and then just figure eight all the way around once I've got to about roughly that point I'm just going to loop it under where my palm is get that nice and tight once I'm happy with that get my thumb out I just need to wrap a few times round like that go over my finger or my thumb pass a loop through as I take my finger or thumb out pull it tight and that's the job done okay so that's how you hang the cordage
is set up now, um, just a standard setup um, for what we're demonstrating, for what we're demonstrating today. Um, so it's tarped at all four corners, all out 45 degrees, um, where the pegs are driven in um, and the lines that go around them. Uh, you will have noticed that I arranged them so that the cord is coming from relatively low down on the peg not too high up if it's high up then it has a chance of levering the peg out but by having it fairly low down that could go lower actually but by having it fairly low down to the ground it's less likely to have such a lever and effect on the um on the peg and pull out the ground maybe it's when the wind increases okay so that is the tarp set up good to go um we've used the uh evenc hitch the top taut hitch and the figure four hitch which uh, gives us that friction to be able to tighten the, pole, the poles their, their pegs up sorry okay so hope that's been useful to you that's just the way that i do it we'll uh, look now at setting up the uh, hammock and really there's very little to that um, and uh, just see how the, the the system integrates in that sense the top with the hammock okay then so my uh hammock uh, comes with these tapes in a second uh, the hammock comes with its own tapes and all I do with these tapes is pass them around the tree and then tie them off okay, now, there's, nothing, there's nothing complicated about the way I do this I pass it around the tree and make sure that the tarp isn't sticking out beyond uh, the hammock sorry isn't sticking out beyond the tarp and then all i generally do is just tie it off now people who aren't used to using this kind of kit get a little bit freaked out by that um, but i literally just tie a knot like i'm tying my laces pull it tight and that's the job and you think that doesn't look particularly safe and secure but it really is um, so let's take it to the other end okay uh, incidentally my hammock has a mosquito net built in so i always make sure when i'm tying it in position that the um the mosquito net is facing upwards otherwise i've got to retwist it later on the other thing that i do at this point i have a length of cord and i tie it onto the hammock um, so that I pinch the two lines together um, and just tie a little knot and i leave those dangling and what will happen is when the rain uh, potentially runs down these lines this will sit just underneath the hammock i'll have to adjust it slightly um, but as it gets to that point it will reach these and drip down that way rather than soak in the hammock okay so i'll do the other end and i'll talk you through um, i mentioned that i had the carabiners at either end of my tarp um, and the reason for that is i like having those because i can also put a line so this line connects to the carabiners at both ends and runs under my tarp. That's useful, useful for hanging kit up during the night. It's useful for hanging washing up to dry if I need to. But also it means that once I've tied one end of my hammock at that end, I can then loop my hammock over the top of that line that's between the two carabiners. And it means I keep it off the ground if I'm needing to do anything. I don't really want my hammock on the ground. Not so much of an issue in the UK, of course. Um, I have used tarps and hammocks in Central America in the jungle and I really don't want to put my hammock on the floor to allow um, three or four big ugly critters to crawl into it and um, give me a little bit of a fright in the middle of the night. Um, so for that reason I like to keep my kit off the ground and that's a really handy way of doing it. Okay. Okay then, so we've got the tarp secured with the same style of knot around the tree, tie it like your boot laces, um, secured at that end, you've already seen secured at this end. Um, the mosquito net is facing upwards so that if I needed to I can kind of, you know, peg it out and so on, but I'm not going to bother to do that. Um, and that's it, that's the hammock up ready to go. Okay, so 
Um, that's a very basic way to set up your tarp and hammock. Uh, the simple knots that I use are dead easy to remember um, and it means that I'm in a position to be able to um, take this really lightweight kit uh, and get out there into the woods and know that I'm going to be uh, comfortable and, um, and I have everything that I need. Okay, um, I'll probably tighten this up slightly at this point I guess. Um, just to make sure that it's not going to move me during the night, so I just tighten out the way, finishing off with a couple of half hitches, um, and then that's it, it's good to go. Right, so thanks for watching. Um, as always, uh, like and subscribe, uh, share please with uh, anyone else you know who might be interested, um, and uh, otherwise, I'll see you out there sometime. Okay.